Last year, we, we means uh, Indrajit sir and I were thinking about creating some modules to help people in um, different sections. So, as you know, we made uh, engineers VARC for those who are not very comfortable with English language and non-engineers quant for those who have quit mathematics from last uh, two or uh, five years. So, and we also made LRDI Inception which consisted of some really great difficult sets. We thought we don't have anything for um, basics of LRDI. So we call it LRDI Essentials and this year we're going to uh, have a proper insight and the ease of uh, understanding any kind of LRDI puzzle which gives you nightmares, not anymore. So let's understand what is it all about. It's a one-step solution, one-step solution. Look at this guy, he just got the one-step solution. Oh, he's, yay! One-step solution for all CAT 2025 LRDI beginners. Cool. And I'm sure that you guys are going to jump like this the moment you finish this. So, what are we going to do? And what you need to expect? First is fundamentals of puzzles. When I say fundamentals of puzzles, see, puzzles can be of different types. Uh, puzzle in itself is not a type, it's a framing, it's a way of framing a question. Okay, so puzzles can be based on arrangements, distributions, roots and networks, uh, games and tournaments, it can be multiple things, binary logic, etc. So those are logical puzzles. Fundamentals of puzzle, when I say fundamentals, uh, we'll make sure that you understand that how a puzzle is made and how it has to be looked upon, then all the topics from scratch. When I say all the topics, all topics of LR and DI. It will be close to 12 to 15 topics which we'll be discussing here. Then identifying the conditions. What are conditions? So any kind of puzzle, you know, um, essentially, like in olden days, logical reasoning puzzles were used to test the intelligence quotient of people. You know that? In fact, uh, when Einstein was there, in, Pre, pre World War. So he made a puzzle. It was a selection arrangement distribution puzzle in which there were five people and they liked different cities, different colors, they were from different buildings and different countries. And he wrote, you know, five to six conditions based upon which we had to arrange and distribute those people. All right. So every person was classified in three different ways choice of his color, the building he lived in, and the country he was from. So that makes it like five, three different ways to classify one single person and we had five different people. So there will be multiple conditions and all those conditions were uh, helping to solve the puzzle. It was said that apart from Einstein, only one percent people were about to solve this puzzle across the globe. Now the problem is one percent, at that time people not that literate and uh, majorly Across the world, people did not have access to knowledge also. It was colonial, empire everywhere. But right now, if you solve that puzzle, I think you will take not more than five minutes or maybe 10 minutes. The thing is, maybe the IQ has increased or education, access to education has increased. But whatever it is, in this module, we are going to improve the IQ as well as access. So here it is, identifying the conditions. Conditions will be in terms of statement. For example, this person likes this color. The person who likes this color uh, lives in a building which is not this, okay? And uh, the initial of the name of the person is same as the initial of the color he or she likes. So these are the kind of conditions which will make your mind boggle. The problem is that if it is just one condition, we are okay with it. The problem is there are seven to ten different conditions and to retain one condition, the moment you reach to, let's say you read the first condition, read the second, third, make some note, reach the fourth condition and you feel, oh shit, I have just forgotten everything, can't retain. So the first thing is you need to identify the conditions. Conditions can be definite. Conditions can be probabilistic. When I say definite, so any condition which will give you exact idea of where to distribute or to select or to arrange some person or some aspect, some asset, uh, that is a definitive statement or condition. And the conditions which are probabilistic, they're not like, like the person who was sitting next to the person who was wearing a hat, I mean, don't know who was here wearing the hat. So, there are so many probabilistic conditions are there. So, we need to identify those conditions and uh, uh, go on. Now, 
identifying the limitations. When I say limitations, right, uh, the part of conditions only. So, limitations do not help you in arranging the things uh, or selecting the things the way they are. Con limitations help you in rejecting the things that we do not want. What we want, we select through conditions. What we don't want, we reject through limitations. All right. And you will get to know what are conditions, what are limitations in the puzzles that we are going to solve. Then comes the understanding question maker's mindset. This is something, you know what. So, I fashionably say this. I have been a part of, I have been teaching for the last 10 years. I have been part of different kind of motivational speeches, gone to colleges and uh, you know all that stuff. So, I always tell the uh, learners that if the only test to know whether you understand a topic or not is in creating a question on that topic. If you can create a question, a difficult question, a complex question on let's say percentages, that means you understand percentages in and out. So, at the very same time, to create a question, one needs to know everything, point number one. Point number two, that person should also know how to give statements or conditions and limitations, the limitations at the same time. And a question maker, when he or she tries to create any logical reasoning set or puzzle, what he sees, like right now, if someone asks me, go and create a puzzle right now. So, I will see around me, okay. I have a board here, okay. There are le letters written. The chair also, not visible. A marker, digital marker. A remote controller. BenQ, okay. What is this? BenQ again. Wow, <laughs> obviously. It has to be BenQ. This is a camera, Nikon. Some lights. Some um, sound uh, cancellation apparatus. An air conditioner, my name, there's a person sitting in front of me. So, there can be different kind of assets, attributes which I can use and uh, create a logical puzzle based on maybe um, I'll create a puzzle that when, when whenever I, I write fundamentals, the next word that I write is puzzle. It's a statement, right? So, b based on these different statements, I might create a puzzle. So, these, this exercise that I did right now in front of you, this is the kind of uh, going inside the mind of question maker. It's like Inception movie. When, you know, they went inside the mind of people, inside the dream and tried to manipulate them. So, I will take you there to make you understand what exactly goes on in the mind of someone who creates the question and what he or she expects. If I want to answer a question, you can answer. If I don't want to answer, you won't be able to answer in 5 or 10 minutes. So, that is the kind of uh, 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 understanding and, and, and uh, <clears throat> thought process of a question maker. Now, complications are part of life and puzzles. <laughs> you know what? In this entire module, the name says LRDI Essentials. These are essentials. These are the things which, you know, will start, will equip you with the tools that are required to run a race. But probably they won't teach you how to... Uh, win that race, okay? So, so uh, the race is won when the race is complicated. An easy race is unworthy. But to prepare for the real race, one needs to run an easy race, isn't it? So, complications, complications test you in life and also, also in the logical puzzles. So, I'll also tell you how a question maker can complicate a puzzle, what kind of conditions, limitations he will impose upon you so that you feel, okay, this is something which is out of scope or, you know, extra planetary maybe. Uh, <laughs> so, those complications are required. I'll tell you what complications will be put. And the moment you understand this in the real CAD, on the real um, paper, real mock, you will be able to understand that this is a complication that has been put upon so, in a way, you know, you will understand what conditions, limitations, and then comes the complications, the complications that make a set difficult, moderate, or easy. Then concept builder illustrations and examples, obviously, won't be solving questions here. For that, we have LRDI inception. Here, I'll be solving a few sets, which will be nothing but concept builder illustrations, or we can say examples. Well, now, what else will you do? That was logical reasoning. Now we have data interpretation. So first data representation techniques, 
What is data representation techniques? Data, what is data? Data is anything randomly scattered, uh, random numbers, random words, random people, random events in life. That's data, right? So that data, when it, when we want it to, you know, make, we, when we want the data to make some kind of sense, some kind of logic, some kind of message, we represent it in different ways. So the techniques of data representation can vary. It can be graphs, line graphs, ogives, curves, bar graphs, column graphs, histograms, pie charts, scattered plots. So there can be different kind of data representation techniques and will make you learn that whatever the representation is, in the end, everything boils down to just data. So <clears throat> second is observing the graphs and then analysis of patterns. Graphs, when I say graphs, uh, in data interpretation, the kind of graphs that they give are majorly line graphs or curves. Sometimes it can also be a mixture of uh, bar charts and uh, line graphs. So a line graph, the kind of the flow it has, the sharp decline or steep decline, you know, or, or the rise, all those things actually give us enough mathematical ideas of what is going to happen in the future in the graph or what happened in the past. Uh, this might not make sense now, but if I show you something like this, so your graph which goes like this, then this, then this. So if I ask you what is the, um, um, at what point the graph had the highest or the steepest slope, you will say this is, it is point A, B, C, D, it's from point C to D. This is a simple thing which I told you, but observation of graphs can actually make you uh, save a lot of time. You will save at least 10 seconds in each analysis which will result in saving of at least two minutes per set and that's huge in CAT. Analysis of patterns. So the way data is given to you, it might be having some kind of pattern. Uh, not always, but if there's a pattern, I'll make you understand that as well. Directions and units used. A lot of people do not read the directions carefully, even if CAT uh, mentions mentioned it explicitly. Read the directions carefully, answer the questions that follow. In the directions, there can be things about units being used. So I saw uh, a data set, I think in my preparation days, the amounts were given in dollars in one line uh, at one point. Other point was some, um, uh, I think it was yen maybe, pound sterling, all that stuff was there. And in the end, the question that they were asking, the question they were asking was in rupees. All right. And all the options looked correct. All the options were numerically correct. It was in dollars, one option, other was in um, some other currency. Only two options were in terms of rupees. So if you did not read carefully the directions, the units that we have to convert into rupee, and there was a conversion matrix given in the question itself, a lot of people marked it wrong. Because the question stem was in terms of dollars and the options were in terms of rupees. All right. So mathematical tools to interpret data elements. Tools, majorly the two tools. One is percentages. I keep on talking about this. I don't know why the entire world represents things in percentage. Even, you know, laymen, the people who are not educated, they all say this 50-50 chance of having something, doing something. Somehow they know that these two chances should add up to 100. That's why I say 50-50 chances there, right? So, and in terms of ratios also, we say chances are uh, equal. Or maybe chances are uh, one by four. Uh, give me some uh, cutting tea, half half tea. So all, all those things we keep on using in our daily lives also. So percentages and ratios are two essential mathematical assets which are used to interpret data elements. And then tabulation, very, very, very important. Any kind of data would not make sense if you do not write it in a familiar way. Familiar way is making tables. Tables will consist of rows and columns. And in the rows and columns, we'll have to fill in data, fill in the values given in the logical reasoning or data interpretation puzzle. And if you make the correct table, you are good to go. By the way, tabulation is not that easy. 
there are chances in which if the set is complex, I have even made eight different tables out of which seven were rejected and one was correct. So creating those tables like, you know what, let's say we have uh, three ways to classify something and uh, there are probabilistic statements. So there is one element which I assume to be true. Based on that to be true, I made a table. Okay. The second element, again, there was probability. What was true, we don't know. So in that case, here we had two options. Let's say A can assume two different values. Let's say A1 and A2. And after that, A1 goes to B, A2 also goes to B, and B in itself has, can assume two different values, B1, B2. Here also B1, B2. And I think you, it's, it's, it's uh, easy to understand. If something like this comes up, so A has two values, B has two values, two into two, there'll be four different possibilities just by having two data elements. So you know what, I need to make four different tables out of which three will be rejected. So tabulation is an art, it's not a science. I love arts, you know. So welcome, welcome to LRDA Essentials. And now all of you should be watching things in sequence. It's uh, Kamal Lohia, sir, Raj. Uh, Kumar Jha sir and I who are your mentors and your guides <laughs> all right that's a sneak peek and welcome to iQuanta welcome to LRD Essentials a module that is going to change the way people look at LRDI puzzles thank you